Welcome to PBI Radio, everybody. It's Chris Guns, and today my guest is U.S. Olympic boxing coach Bashir Abdullah. Olympics didn't go quite like Bashir wanted, I'm sure, but it was an uphill battle from the start. He he worked with the team for four weeks before they went out to London, and it kind of showed for the men's team anyway. But it wasn't all bad because the ladies saved the day. And we're going to talk about the men and the ladies and how it was when Clarissa Shields became the lone gold medalist for America. So let's not waste any more time and get Bashir Abdullah on the line. Bashir Abdullah, thanks for joining us, PBI Radio, man. Say it again. I said thanks for joining us at Pro Boxing Insider. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Truly appreciate you know being your guest tonight. I appreciate you being here. Tell me about London, man. How how how'd you like London? <laughs> uh, London was bittersweet, man. You yeah. know, uh, we had a poor performance uh, with the guys, mm-hmm. men, and uh, the women. You know, they represented us well. Yeah, they did. Uh, there was really no training staff until four weeks before the games. So that's when you started, and you kind of began with an uphill battle from the start. It was a team, not not that it didn't have talent, but they didn't have the, the time to prepare and they didn't have the experiences that other countries have. How did they approach you for that job, and, and was it something that you wanted? Well, you know, at the beginning of the process, you know, this whole quad, I said I was going to, you know, sit on the sideline. But there was a push for my service, you know, through, uh, 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 mostly through the, the athletes and most of the females because I was fortunate enough to be successful with them the last two times at the uh, World Championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in China, we brought back five medals, you know, uh, uh, and improved ourselves at our medal count from t- 2010. So it was a big push from the women. And then when I had my opportunity to work with the guys in camp uh, uh, for the... Uh, the American qualified, you know, they got a chance to, you know, to experience my 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 uh, training regimen, my coaching philosophy, and so they got hopped on board and they started pushing me. And then there's some a few other people, coaches, administrators, thought that I was the guy that was be able to pull it off. But the reality is, you know, if if we don't have a structured program, uh, uh. It's almost impossible, regardless of how good, how talented I am as a coach, how talented our athletes are. You know, we just didn't have enough time to uh, uh, to be successful. Absolutely, it's what it's all about is is preparing and, and experiences and knowing knowing where you've been and and you could get there again. But upon first meeting the team, though, who did you see that that who did you recognize right off as as possible big time? Well, you know, to, with the feet, with the uh, males. We thought uh, we had two experienced guys, you know, Rashi Wan and uh, Michael Hunt was two most experienced guys. And then when you look at, uh, you know, there's, I thought of several of those guys, if we was able to instill some of our, our techniques and, and make it second nature to them and, uh, and get them to execute strategies, uh, we can pull it off. And so you're looking at, Diaz, Diaz was very special to me once I got him in in, uh, in camp. Uh, uh, Earl Spence, and uh, one of my favorites was also was uh, uh, Terrell. Mm. You know, I thought Terrell was an undersized uh, middleweight, you know, 75 kilo compared to the rest of the world, but he was fundamentally sound, you know, and uh, uh, he wasn't too far off from the things that we was trying to implement you know, in the camp. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, we creatures of habit. You know, at the end of the day, uh, when things get heated up, then now we're going to revert back to what we really know. You know, mm-hmm. and in most cases, that will happen. Yeah, I, I always hear about the closeness of the team. Did When you first got there, did they did they bring you into that circle? Or did you kind of feel like an outsider? Who was that, the athletes? Yeah, I heard how close the boxers were with each other, and, and they had a... They, they... Well, I think the, the coaching staff was part of that. You know, that's one of the things that we we uh, uh, wanted this. We expressed, you know, throughout the camp. Once we came together, you know, that we have to be a unified team if we're going to give ourselves a chance. 
you know. Uh, and so it's one of the most uh, unified teams I ever been around, you know. It was great to work with. The attitudes was positive. They stuck together, you know. And uh, and we thought that was the edge, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we thought that was going to give us that edge to, you know, to beat off, beat the odds, you know. But uh, that wasn't enough. It, it goes back to reality. You got to have a four-year plan. You got to have finance. You got to have a structured organization. You got to have a whole lot of international experience, mm -hmm. you know, because the average uh, 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 gold medalists or silver medalists, you know, they got 10-plus bouts prior to the Olympic Games, international bouts, yeah. you know. Some of those guys uh, got 300 fights, you know. Uh, well, that's, that, I'm not even just calling the fight. I'm talking about just the, the bouts they got prior to the competition they had over a four-year period leading up to the games, yeah, yeah. you know, and we have an average of maybe five or six, and, and those numbers only high because of right here micro experience with mm -hmm. the men. But if you take them out of it, you're looking at anywhere to three to four yeah. international bouts. So we're well behind with international experience, you know, uh, and uh, we just have to restructure our program and make it a very elite program and uh, uh, make the standards very high, you know, and our athletes and coaches got to decide if they want to be professionals or they want to be uh, amateur uh, uh, boxers and have a dream of winning a gold medal at the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. So much you know? that has to be done. Um, so much, so much. How, how was the flight to London? Uh... <laughs> It was cool, you know. Yeah. But we was excited, you know. It was, it was, of course, a long flight, but you know, my mind never shut off. You know, mm -hmm. I was ready to go into it, this thing, you know. And my mind was constantly running, you know, trying to always find that edge for our athletes, yeah. you know. You got and, uh, it. Even though I wasn't working the corners or anything like that, but I still accepted the challenge, you mm -hmm. know. But mm -hmm. again, you know, reality set in, you know. You just got to have a structured program to be successful at the games. You know? That's right. When when you guys got to England, what did you what did you see? How how did you like how the British put that show on? They're known for that pomp and circumstance and putting on a big show. How impressive was it when you got? Oh, it was very. The, I mean, the, the the Brits was a great host. I mean, they was true boxing fans. The venue was full every night. The energy was high. You know, so and and they was great. They didn't just cheer for. Uh, the athletes, they cheered for other countries as well, mm -hmm. you know, even when they felt uh, bad decisions uh, was there, they let it be known, regardless of what country it was. Mm -hmm. So they was a great host, they was great fans, you know, and it, it was it was very exciting to watch. You know, I would love to see our venues feel like that in the United States with amateur boxers. I'd love it. I, I, love, I love how England treats boxers and, and, and the show that they put on when you watch boxing from america from the from the uk it's always fun to watch did you right. what what did you do i saw pictures of uh people at americans gym and who else did you meet did you meet other big time british boxers no uh american was you know uh was the only one i got a chance to meet face to face you know uh, uh our gym was pretty much closed off to to everyone you know he was a great host uh, uh, I was very, we was very appreciative that he came by, you know, after his, his loss with Danny Garcia, that, you know, he sh showed that he was a true professional and, uh, uh, that didn't prevent him from coming out and interacting with us and sharing his Olympic experience with our athletes, you know, so that, that was great. That was one of the positive, uh, part about this, uh, Olympic, uh, movement in London that, you know, that, you know, he came out and, and was a first class guy, you know, all the way. Yeah, yeah. And do you stick with your team throughout, or do you mingle with other people? Do you go and meet the other teams, the other boxers on the team? You know, I, you know, uh, I, pretty much I, I know a, a, a lot. You know, I've been in this business for a while, you know, uh, but uh, I stayed over at the University of East London. I wasn't in the village, you know, so uh, even if I was, you know, I don't think I would have been, you know, interacting too much because I, I think my schedule would have prevented me from doing that. You know, my focus would have been on our athletes and, and uh, what we needed to do to uh, get in the ring and perform at our best. Yeah, how excited were Queen Marlon and, and Clarissa going? This is the first uh, year female boxing was a part of the Olympics. Had to be excited. Uh, that, that was a historic moment, man. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing 
to watch, you know, those women, not just American women, but the women throughout the world, you know, uh, Katie Keller, you know, mm -hmm. the energy she brought into that arena when she got into the ring was amazing, man. You know, you would think that that was uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao mm -hmm. fight, you know, yeah. uh, that we continue to miss here and <laughs> miss out on. But, uh it, it was exciting. You know, you would have to be there in that venue to feel all that energy and excitement and history that those women brought to amateur boxing. Yeah, I'm sure. Had to be exciting. Yeah. And what do you what do you what do you think of Rashi Warren, first guy to make three Olympic US teams and ended in heartbreak again, first round going? It, it was very sad because I thought, you know, uh he put his heart into it. Uh uh he was a great leader. You know, he was a, I mean, he was an awesome team captain. He pushed his teammates every day, you know, and shared all, you know, his past Olympic experience with them. He was very serious about it. You know, the only thing I think caught up with him was the weight. You know, I think he was at that weight too long, you know, uh, uh, and it caught up with him. You know, uh, you could tell once he got down, I think it was around about 1,414 pounds, his performance dropped off, mm -hmm. you know, and the first time we saw it was in Bolton when he was sparring BS, you know, I never seen anyone have the best of Rashi like that mm -hmm. since I've known him and watched him spark, you know, so that was the first indicator that, you know, that he's just not the same uh, uh, boxer at that weight class, yeah. you know. And um, it was a controversial Olympics throughout, pretty much, and and Errol Spence had had uh, been declared the loser in his fight with the Indian kid Vikas Krishan, and then upon further looking at the video and stuff, they 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 took they they gave they gave Errol four more points, didn't they? Yes, that and, is correct. Uh, then because they after reviewing the video, uh, the committee saw that. Uh, uh, the Indian boxer had uh, held uh, Earl a total of nine times in, mm -hmm. in the third round. Yeah, in third round alone. And, right, you know, but in the, in, in the third round alone. So, you know, we had counted, when we reviewed it, we thought we counted seven. And not only that, he intentionally spit out his mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And that rule state that uh, that should have been an automatic warning as well, rewarding Earl two more points. But, they said that uh, uh, the nine holes that the the, the referee uh, ignored and didn't call, it, it, it was called, you know, that we should have been rewarded two warnings, which gave us four points. They didn't give us any points for the mouthpiece because they <clears> felt <throat> that the referee was in a bad position to see that, mm -hmm. you know. you know. Yeah. But it worked out in our favor, you know. We got it overturned, but we, un unfortunately we weren't able to take advantage of it. Yeah, it was it was an embarrassing Olympics for boxing and, and a few other sports too. The the Chinese teams come to mind and, and the lack of, of real testing for Jamaicans was even brought up. What do you have to say about the boxing officials, the judging and the refs and how how ridiculous was it, Bashir? Well, we, 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 I mean, it's, I think it's one. I think we had a black guy. You know, I'm a part of both of these organizations. You know, I even I consider myself a part of IEVA and USA Boxing. Uh, we we still got to get it right. You know, uh, I think uh, we had a very bad showing. I think uh, uh, the percentage of uh, 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 winners are still getting not getting a decision uh, is too high. You know, the percentage of making the, the bad calls is still too high. We got to fix that. Now, I don't know. You know, but what I was saying about the uh, referees, uh, uh, the judging, you know, I think it's one of the worst we've seen in quite some time. You know, we still seeing where the winners are losing and the losers are winning. You know, and the percentage of uh, uh, bad decisions is still a little bit too high. You know, I, I think our president, uh, President Wu, is, is working very hard and, and trying to clean those things up, you know, uh, but we just haven't got there yet, you know, and I'm a part of both organizations. I I consider myself a, a member of AIBA and USA Boxing, you know, because I, I, I love amateur boxing, and, and, and I want us to, to get it right, you know, yeah. in both organizations, you know, because I, I would love to be around when, 
uh, boxing get re- recognized as being a credible sport in the Olympic movement. You yeah. know. Yeah. So when they did, yeah. they 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 overturned the rule, and Errol Spence actually won the fight after he already probably shed some tears after the loss and stuff. So it was kind of like an emotional roller coaster, probably for. Aerosmith. It was, it was, and you know, and he had beat the Russian before, mm-hmm. you know, on a tiebreaker, and you know, I, it's funny, you know, we're talking about this, because I looked at the bout the other day, and, and, and I thought that bout should have been a little bit more closer, even had it, if you look at it several times, you might think Earl might have won it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, if you count his body shots and all that, but then I go back and look at the things that we didn't do right, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, I always look at that, and uh, the game plan for for Earl was the box move to the left, you know, staying on the outside shoulder, you know, and bagging that rushing up, you know, mm-hmm. constantly bagging up. He did it, you know, to a certain extent, but I think he could have did it a little bit more. But when I looked at tape, I thought Earl left it all in the ring, yeah. you know, yep. and uh, and we, I, I, I was very pro, uh, proud of his efforts, but it just happened happened to be it wasn't enough. You know, to get him to win that night. Yeah, most of them uh, all fought good, close fights in in their losses, except for Jamel Herring and Dominic Brazio. But Errol was the only one that made it to the quarterfinals. That's got to right. is just disappointing. But every everyone else ha- had great showings. They just lost by maybe a point, three points. Right. Uh, we was we was in the bout, you know, and uh, I felt uh, if we would have had a little bit more time with those athletes. You know, I actually believe we need at least a minimum of six months. A, a team, a coaching staff need at least six months. And sometimes I don't think that's enough, you know, because uh, at the end of the day, you know, if, if you was my coach for eight, uh, 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 four to eight years, and then I go join somebody else, you know, when things get heated up, to it, I'm probably going to do the things that you taught me versus uh the things that I I was trying to implement, and I mean, you was trying to implement in a very short time, mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, uh, so we we just we gotta we gotta build from the the bottom up, you know. So we gotta create a national uh, a system just like the rest of the world is doing, you know. You know, I, I start I studied the Cubans a lot, and I always wanted to know what uh, Segura what made him so successful, you know. Mm-hmm. And after studying and reading, doing research, you know, and, you know when he came, when he was named the, the head coach of the Cubans, you know, it was back in 1960, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, his first Olympics, you know, they only won, uh, they didn't medal, yep. you know, and yep. then the second Olympics, he got a silver, That's it. you know, yeah. and then the third, he got a gold. So he went through several Olympics before he was successful, but... The Cubans didn't change. They didn't change their program. They could constantly build. Mm-hmm. It was a long-term thing. Yeah. So with us, so you know, we get a bad performance. We throw all our experience out the window. Yeah. You know, we always starting over. Yeah. That's true. You know, and we don't understand that that's not how you build a successful program. That's true. How deep? You know. How deep do you do, did you see the ladies of the world? Not just American ladies, of course, but. From other countries too. How how deep are they? Are they? Oh, I, I think you know. I think uh, the, they're going to add more weight classes. The women women boxing are excited. You know, let me show some of the difference between. You know, I'm glad we're talking about the women. Hmm. You know, and and a lot of I elite coaches in America out here say the same thing. You know, but one of the difference that I I was able to realize during this Olympics, I was able to see the difference between the men and the women, is that. Our women, they are loyal to winning. Mm. And what I mean by that, you know, they 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 not afraid to let their personal coaches know, well, hey, this guy know a little bit too. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? He, he know what he's doing. I, I like what he's saying to me. Yeah. I, I agree what he's saying to me or trying to teach me. But our men, they loyal to what? They coaches. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be known as sellouts or... or uh, uh, they loyal to the hood or they city or they states or whatever. It's mm-hmm. a big difference. They, and maybe because the women are still trying to prove themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. it could be. Mm-hmm. And they don't have any outlets. They got they focus on that gold mine, on that gold medal. They know they don't get that open doors for them. Endorsements, mm-hmm. sponsorships, whatever. 
but it don't, it don't open the door for a, 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 a great professional career. Yeah. You know, it ain't a lot of money in that, in, that, in, in that for them right now. Maybe in the future, but now it's not. You know, so that gold medal is big to them. Just like the Cuban males or the Russian males, they know that gold medal opened doors for them. Oh, yeah. They overachieved and they... And they overachieved, that's right. Worked hard. So, and then, not to knock our guys down, because, you know, we, we will take our guys every four years, man. Mm. You know? They, they turned pro, majority of them. Rashid was the only one. We we're very fortunate that he came back around along with Michael Hunter. You know, mm. so we, we don't see that too often. You know, and uh, uh, but the girls, they've been around for a while. They yeah. got a lot of experience. And then when you look at how we formatted and, and prepared our athletes to reload, how much, I mean, that was time for us to be getting those guys in camp and announcing experience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, versus boxing each other again. You know, yeah. the women had a tremendous amount of competition going leading up to the game. Yeah. They had the trials, they had the continentals, they had the world championship. Mm -hmm. They was busy. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And bring me through the, the yeah. ride you had with Clarissa. Everything went perfect. How right, you know, to me, you know, I don't know how many people would agree with me, but I feel... That, that loss at the World Championship was the best thing for that young lady. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was the best thing for that young lady because she be, she she became open-minded to some of the things that we were saying to her. Now, her coach, it was a combination of what, what her and her coach have done, been doing for years, and the little things that we added to her. Yep. You know, using her jab and learning how to box a little bit. And how, how to go Just fighting all the time. How did she react when when she knew the medal was hers, gold medal winner? She, it was it was it was amazing to watch. You know, uh, you know everybody had predicted that she would win the gold medal. Mm -hmm. You know, and and she, uh, and she she went out there and did it. She represented us well. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was just an emotional night for her. You know, uh, because prior to that she had never lost before. You know, she had her first loss at the at the uh, at the world championship. You know, and and when I, I recall her saying to me after that, because we had continued to train, and we went over to spar. And then on the sparring sessions, we sparred against the Chinese boxers. You know, she gained that confidence back. And I remember we was walking back from that training session. She said to me, you know, I kind of thought I lost it a little bit. You know, so I'm, I'm I'm very thankful that we chose to continue to train and go spar with her and try to get as much experience as she possibly could. Yeah. You, you know? Think, you think she'll get so training? I'm sorry, go on. I'm sorry, go ahead. You think she's going to get treated? Uh, I'm sure she won't get treated as, as well as Andre Ward did, as a guy winning the gold medal, but do you think it'll be something something close, something similar? think she'll break barriers? I, I think so. I think they knocking on the door already. I've been hearing a lot of good things about her. You know, how people uh, you know want to uh, support her, endorse her, uh, sponsor her, you know, and... To me, I think the women draw more sponsors to amateur boxing uh, in the United States than the men do. Oh, you know, I mean, you look at Marlene, the type of sponsorship she had and endorsement she had. Yeah. You know, she was on uh, CNN. Uh, Queen had started opening doors after she, you know, revealed her life story and all that. Cause they, the women have some amazing stories. Absolutely. You know, and, and and people take to that. You know, and they they excellent to me. They they skill levels. Increasing every year, getting better yeah. every year. Kicked in the doors. Oh, yeah. Say that again. They kicked in the doors. Oh, they kicked it in, and they exciting to watch as well. Absolutely. So you know, we we got two different programs we're working with. We got uh, a very experienced women program. We need to continue and build off that, and then we got to find a way to build our men's program up. And it's got to start with our juniors, you know. With our JO, so we got to mm -hmm. start investing our money there and, and structure the programs there. And, 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 and have a four-year plan, you know, with training cycles and uh, international competition, you know, and qualified coaches around, mm -hmm. you know. And then we got to educate our coaches. Our coaches' pool is, in my opinion, is weak. You know, we go around saying that we got some of the best coaches in the world. Yes, we do. We have some good ones and we have some bad ones. Mm -hmm. We have some don't even have a clue about how to put programs together. You know, we just wear the title, coach. We open a gym and say we coaches. Yeah. You know? Anyone could but be. But we, we had no coaching development. 
Yeah. You know? Let me ask you, as, as a boxing guy, how impressed were you with the, the other teams, though, the men teams? I mean, it's nothing that I, I, I fear for our country. You know, uh, one of the things that, you know, like we had the training parties out there, you know, and we had a little meeting with them and we tried to, you know, get some feedback from them to see what they learned because hopefully we, they'll be our, uh, uh, some of them will be some of our Olympians in 2016. Mm-hmm. You no, know, Sean Simpson said, he said, we get baby too much in the United States. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. That's what he said, and I was happy to hear him say that because mm. he saw it. He understand when he said that to me, and uh, uh, and they realized that we fight uh, our pace is too slow in America. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I was a boxer. It's fast. Yep. It's fast. Yeah. And so we, we, I don't care what nobody say. We pick up too many bad habits when we're in those pro gyms and sparring with those pros. It don't help us for amateurs. Yeah. You look at yeah, guys like bad habits for us. guys like Kostya Zhu from from Russia. He turns pro and he could pretty much win a championship. And guys today like Guillermo Rigando from Cuba, you know, he, he's already a champion. Won his championship right. in seventh pro fight. Right. So these guys come prepared. That's right. Pro they come prepared. You know, and uh, you know, like I like. Let's take uh, and I and I love this kid to death. And I thought he was going to have a good chance. And I thought. And that's uh, Jose Ramirez, you know, because he's a beast. I think he's going to be a hell of a pro. Oh, yeah. You know, I think yeah. he's going to be a hell of a pro. Yeah. But he had that pro, he, he's already groomed for professional boxing. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, when he came into the gym and we saw him, I said, if we don't get him to start fast, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He didn't get embarrassed. He gets stronger. Third, third, fourth, fifth round, he gets stronger. Yeah. Yeah. But he put himself in a position, to, you know, if we would have had that, that, that third round and that first or even the second, he would have pulled it out. Yeah. All all our guys, I think, from, from this class will, will turn out to be better pros. And no, I think they will, too. I yeah, think they well, will, too. I think we're going to have some good pros out of this class, like Terrell, uh, Earl. I think, I don't I, I don't know if JoJo going to stay around. That's uh, Joseph Diaz, or he's going to turn professional. But if he do, and if they move him right, because he's very young, you know, still. But I think he'd be one, and Ramirez is going to be one, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I know uh, Dominic was uh, uh, looking at turning pro, but mm-hmm. I pray that he doesn't. <clears throat> yeah. Really do. He actually I don't think with- he's ready. Sparred with no, the Klitschko's, man. didn't he? Say that again. Dominic got some sparring in with the Klitschko's, I heard, right? <laughs> Did he? Or is that Michael yeah. Hunter? No, Michael Hunter used to go over there and yeah. spar with the Klitschko. So, yeah. You know, uh, uh, I didn't see the purpose of that. Mm-hmm. Besides the financial purpose, but uh, I don't see anything that he, he wasn't going to see anyone that big in amateur boxing, you know? Yeah. Uh, so That's why uh, I'm thinking they'll be better pros than they, they are amateurs. They're already being treated like like pros pretty much they were trained a exactly. lot yeah exactly so hopefully by the oh. next olympics you'll have time to to put your put your stamp the bashir you know the bashir stamp on them <laughs> <You know? laughs> what, what do you what? well I'm, I'm just asking for an opportunity you know for an opportunity give me four years you know if and and let me get the financial support, the leadership support, a mm-hmm. unified organization. We're all traveling down the same path. You know, I don't know any organization is going to be successful just divided, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, uh, so once we decide that as, as an organization that we want to come together and move move in the same direction and, and not just say we want to do what's best for our country and, and the athletes, but put actions behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, put action behind it. So we have a new leader in office now, Dr. Butler. You know, so we'll see which way he uh, directs this, this program, this organization. Mm-hmm. You know, he has been in office for a very short time. So he got the he got the, he got the uh, the will, the ball, and so we're gonna see what what he do, does with it. You know, I'm supporting him. I hope the rest of the country support him as well. Give him his shot. Yeah, don't be afraid. No. Tell him what you want him to do. <laughs> you know, you know what you need. Make it happen. And, and right. one more question: Not just the, I know. I know you're loyal to to the American team. You got a chance to know them and stuff. But when you look at other people who who are gonna turn pro, or who impressed you 
uh, from other teams. Anyone in particular? Or did you? you know, I like, uh, I forget that kid from, uh, uh, he's from France, 69 kilo. Uh, I thought he was, I thought he was really sharp. Uh -huh. You know, uh, I thought he beat the Ukraine and didn't get the decision. Uh, was it Ubali? Uh, wasn't Ubali. Right? I can't remember. He's from France, 69 kilo. Same mm. weight class Earl Spence. Yeah, I'm not even sure. I don't have that information in front of me. Right. You know, and then who else stood out to me was, uh, uh, I like the Chinese uh, light heavyweight. I don't know if he won it or not. I can't recall. Uh, but he was pretty sharp. Yeah. Uh, who else? The Cuban, uh, 60 kilo. Hmm. Not Alvarez, huh? No, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't 60, Alvarez. It was he 41 kilo? I hmm. mean, the, the 64 kilo, 141. It could have been him. I don't know. Oh. Those, those kilos oh. get me. <laughs> <laughs> 141. You know, uh, but, uh, I, I one that stays in my mind was that the the, the Frenchman, no. oh, 69 kilo. I thought he gave he 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 boxed the heck out of the Ukraine, the world champ. Mm. You know, and uh, he didn't get the call. Yeah, but sure, Abdullah. And I thought it was very sad. Yeah, it is sad, but I, I know with with hard work you're gonna turn it around, and we're gonna have a better 2016. <laughs> God's willing if I get that opportunity. I hope you do. It takes us crazy in the organization. It's true. It's true. From yeah. from the amateur to the pros. Bashir Abdullah, right. appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Hey, thanks. Have thanks, man. Take it easy. All right, you too. I want to thank Bashir Abdullah for coming by and, and, and sharing his insight and, and his opinions and letting us know, giving us the inside and what happened in London. And hopefully, if he does get the, the shot to continue as coach, hopefully they'll give him what he needs to, to have a better 2016 than we had a 2012 in London. And once again, I want to thank Bashir, and thanks for joining us here at PBI Radio. And follow me on Twitter at Chris2Guns. Thank you.